Hey guys and welcome to another TPK tutorial here on the Coach Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at the notebook widget. The notebook widget is one of the six widgets introduced by TTK and it's a pretty powerful one too. And it's something that you might actually want to use and create an entire application based around. Okay, so what is it and what does it do? Well, have you ever used those notepads before? You know, those ones where you have multiple tabs or multiple notes and then you can cycle between them and, you know, have different stuff written down, like on each notepad, on each tab. Or maybe you've used Excel sheets uh, where you have different sheets and you can uh, have different data and different tables, charts written on each one of them. So that's basically what the notebook widget is. It's basically a special widget that allows you to create several tabs, okay, or several windows and you can cycle between those windows. And each window is completely independent of the other. There's like, there can be like 10 widgets, 10, 10 label widgets on one. There can be a few graphs on another one. There can be some buttons and entry widgets on another one. And they all exist in the same area. So you don't need to create three or four separate windows. You, you just have all of it on the same, uh, in the same area. And you can just cycle between those windows. All right, so that's enough of an intro. Let's just go ahead and begin and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as we go further. Okay, so I'll create the notebook first. Okay, notebook and ttk.notebook, remember that. Okay, and we'll just pass in one parameter for now, which is the root as the parent. And we'll come down here and pack it in. Okay, there's not much point in just running the code right now as it is because the notebook itself is based off other widgets that are inside of it. There isn't much to see right now. So let's go ahead and create a few of these, okay? Let's create some tabs is what I mean, okay? Let's create some windows for the notebook, okay? So how do we create these windows? Well, it's actually really easy. All you need to do is create a frame, put some widgets inside of it like you normally do, and then we'll use the appropriate function in notebook it's called add we'll use the add to simply add that frame to the notebook and that's all there is to it so let's go ahead and do so we'll add a total of three windows okay or three frames tdk.frame okay self.notebook remember to have the notebook as the parent because they'll be appearing within the notebook all right so let's copy paste this twice and We'll have our second and third frame, okay? And now let's just pack these in, okay? And once they're packed in, we can add them to the notebook, okay? And there we go. But before we add them into the notebook, let's add just one widget into each one, okay? Just to give them some substance. TTK.label, the simplest widget and frame one okay as the parent remember the notebook then the then the frame and then the widgets inside the frame so there needs to be this hierarchy okay of parents all right so text is equal to this is window one okay and let's just copy this over okay now we have three widgets and just some minor changes here and there frame two frame three Label 2, label 3. Now we need to pack all of these labels in. Label 1.pack, pad x is equal to 5, pad y is equal to 5, and there. We are done. Now, we've done what we've done basically is let's just review. We've created three frames, three separate container widgets, and each one of them contains a single widget. Okay? So, what we need to do now is actually add these to the notebook using add, okay? So what we do is simply pass in the container widget in the first parameter, okay? And the second parameter is going to have the text, okay? This is not in, this is not a compulsory parameter, by the way. We can just do it like this as well, but these are just some of the extra options that we get, okay? And this one is actually kind of important. Text is important because it defines the name of that tab, okay, that appears on the screen and you kind of want this, trust me. So I'll just, you know, type in window one and copy this over again for the other two frames and let's try this out. All right, there we go. 
there's our three tabs and we can cycle between them and you can see the, wid the widget changing okay but the notebook looks kind of small and for that we'll change the option over here okay now let's see what happens and yes this looks a lot better okay this looks like a proper notebook okay so that's how we add in basic you know that's how we add in tabs so let's take a look at some other functions that the notebook offers one thing that it offers one function a very handy one actually is the insert function okay basically like this it's really similar to add with just one additional parameter and before i show you this i just want to create a new frame because i don't want to mess with the ones you already have okay so i'll just create this one pack it in okay and now for this okay four lines of code and just change all this to four okay for frame four label four okay and window four okay now i want to insert this new frame this fourth frame into our take inter window into our take inter notebook okay so the first parameter is not going to be frame four actually it's going to be uh, the index, the index where we want to insert this frame. So normally what happens with add is that it simply appends the frames, right? It frame one, then frame two, then frame three, okay? And this is kind of like appending, okay? But what if we want to specifically insert a frame somewhere? What if we want to specifically insert it at, sec at the second position or in the middle or in the start? Well, this is what uh, insert is for. Okay, I'll pass in zero, which is basically the index value, the index position where I want to, you know, uh, insert it. Okay, and I want to insert frame four, and all of the parameters are just like add after this point. Okay, there's no difference after the first parameter. So if I run this code, we should see frame four in the very starting. Okay, now let's try that uh, with the different index value. Okay, so window four is now located over here. All right, so let's take a look at some other uh, functions that we can use. Let me just remove all this. So by default, what happens that is that the first window you inserted, you know, window one is selected by default. Okay, but what if we want to change this? What if upon launch, we want some other window to be selected? Or what if we just want to, you know, through program, through our program, through our code, change which window is currently being selected, okay? Because obviously the user can cycle through them using his mouse, but what if we want to do it using, um, you know, code? Like if you click on a button, then maybe the window changes. So for that, we have the self.notebook.select function. And this takes as parameter what we call a tab ID, okay? And a tab ID can be many different things. Okay, it can be a string like end, which basically selects the last tab. It can be current, okay, but that's not used in this scenario because we're using it to select something, okay? We don't want to select the currently selected slide already, right? That doesn't make sense. Uh, or this can also be an integer from zero to n, where n is the number of tabs, okay? And it can also just be frame one which is the name basically of our uh, tab. So a name also counts as the tab ID. So if I do frame three, watch what happens. By default, when we load the window now, window three is selected by default, okay? Similarly, let me show you, if I pass two in here, okay? Two as the tab ID, and remember it's zero for frame one, one for frame two, and two for frame three. So if I do this, you'll see window three is selected. It's the same thing, okay? Similarly, if I do one, we get window two selected, okay? And I think you get the point. Other than this, there is another handy way of doing things. It's called the enable traversal, uh, the enable traversal function. What this does is, is that it allows you to switch between uh, the tabs through your keyboard. I'm trying to remember the combination right now. Okay, all right, I figured it out. Basically, control plus tab will uh, cycle through them in ascending order, like window one, window two, window three, window, you know, etc. And if you do control, shift, and tab, it will go in the reverse order, okay? So window three, window two, window one. So this is a handy way, and you can, um, you know, use this to just 
with your keyboard, you can cycle through tabs. Okay, you need to use this function first. Okay, and yeah, what else is there? Well, there's the tab function that I want to talk about because this is pretty useful. The tab function basically takes a tab ID. Again, this can be frame one, this can be zero or whatever. So what this does is that it takes it as a parameter and it returns something rather interesting. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is what it, re it returns. What it just returned was basically the entire, uh, well, it's a dictionary containing all of its options and all of its corresponding values. This is the padding option, okay? And this is the corresponding value. This is the sticky option. This is its corresponding default value. This is its current state. This is the text. Remember, we assigned it window one. Its image is currently empty. Compound is empty. Um, underline is also minus one. So that's basically the tab option. And it's pretty handy because, uh, well, it has it, it has its uses. And there's a variant of this, a two parameter mode. If I pass in a second parameter like text, okay, this will basically give us, uh, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. It's supposed to go inside the tab function. Okay, there we go. So what happened was that only window one was printed out, okay? And basically this is a technique that you can use to basically pick which options value you want to, you know, because usually you won't want all of them, right? Usually you might only want the text or you might want to find out which image it is, in which case this is going to be showing up as blank, honestly, because there actually is no image. Or if you want to find out sticky, the sticky settings. Okay, there you go. So this is another variant and it's pretty interesting. Okay. So now let's take a look at images, okay? How to add, add an image to your title. Uh, sorry, an image to your tab. Because you see this over here right now? It's just text. What if you want to add an icon to make it look better, right? And this is something that I really want to focus on. Well, not, not too much and just emphasize on a bit because online is a bit vague and it took me like a, a whole hour to figure this out. So I'll basically share my technique with you and what possible mistakes people make. Okay, because it's really easy to make mistakes with this, honestly. So I'll just make sure that I, I clarify all that here. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at that. Basically, it's actually, in essence, it's really simple. Okay, but it's, what you're supposed to do is just go here and assign this an image object. That's it, and you're done. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, to get an image object, however, that's a bit more complicated. What you need to do is use some kind of um, f use an appropriate function that can load that image into an appropriate object that TakeInter can recognize. Because obviously you can't just pass a file path like that. Okay. What you need to do is acquire the image in a in an appropriate format first. Okay. So what we'll use is tk.photoimage, which is TakeInter's own default. Uh, you know image handling system. So what this should do is produce an image object that we can pass into it. And this takes the parameter file. Okay. And I already have actually, I already have a close icon dot PNG icon saved in my directory, the same directory as this TTK notebook dot PY file. Okay. So if I do this, this should hypothetically speaking work. Okay. But it didn't. And why is that? So the problem over here is actually that of local and global scope. Basically, the issue is that if you create a local variable or a local object, when you reach the end of the function, it gets destroyed, right? That's basically how local variables and objects work because they don't exist beyond the function they were declared in. Now, if you did the exact same thing like this in the global scope, like without a class, without doing all this in, the, in its function, then everything would have worked out fine. But if you're switching to a class-based or a function-based approach, which is basically the most, you know, the most commonly used approach, I think, then you would run into this issue. Okay. So let me just explain this and how to fix it. Luckily, it's just a one-line fix. You just need to basically apply self. Okay. This basically makes it a part of the class and it will not get destroyed. Okay. It won't get destroyed at, at the end of this function and it'll basically 
uh, exist beyond the init function over here and can be used in other functions as well. Like if I create a new function here, okay, rando, this can actually use the image object, okay? So it's kind of like, it's like not local any anymore. All right, so let's run this code and see our output. There's the image being displayed, great, but the text has disappeared, okay? So what if we want to make the text come back? Well, we change the compound option for that, which defines the relationship between the image and the text, okay? The compound option basically by default states that if there's an image, remove the text, okay? But we might not want that, so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is just change this to left, okay? And what this does is aligns the image to the left, okay? And allows the text to be displayed, okay? Similarly, if I change this to right, you can guess what happens, okay? Otherwise, I can also change this to text only, okay? So only text appears, even though there's, there's an image passed in here. And basically, this is what the compound option can do, okay? So that's pretty cool. So with that, I think we're done with this tutorial. We've covered quite a bit of content, covered quite a bit of settings, all kinds of stuff that we could do with the notebook, okay? And I'm sure now you guys could create a pro proper application based off the notebook if you guys wanted to, okay? And if you guys want any other further documentation, further options, be sure to, to check out my website or you can go check out the documentation for the notebook, okay, whichever you find easier. And all links, all useful links and all that can be found in the, in the description below, okay. And I do hope you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more content coming out, especially on TTK. We have some widgets left to cover and we also have stuff like themes and styles left to cover. So be sure to follow up with the series, okay. Otherwise, see you in a later video.